Good morning again, Coffee with Clark, and this is Saturday, uh, almost a full week after Easter. We're covering a lot of ground in a short period of time because there was actually 40 days, as I said, between uh, the resurrection and ascension. We're going to look at the ascension today. And after the ascension, there was nine more days before Pentecost occurred in the book of the Acts when the uh, New Testament church began. But it says in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 49 through 53, through the end of the chapter, this is Jesus after he told them the last thing he wanted them to do was to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature, uh, teaching them to observe all things he commanded them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He said, Lo, am I with you always unto the end of the age. So uh, obviously this was the most important thing that the Lord wanted his people uh, apostles to follow through on, um, not to talk about uh, anything other than really the gospel being central to what the human race needed to have in order to be saved from their sin and to have the opportunity to be born again. Uh, Jesus didn't tell them to go around and talk about conspiracy theories or uh, focus uh, all their attention on end times or some other part of the Bible uh, or the truth he gave them. He wanted them to preach the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the soon coming, and that uh, the gospel is the only uh, message that can save people from their sin. And so after he tells them this, he says in verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So after he's going to ascend, there'll be a period of nine days where they're going to be waiting for the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Spirit to not only fill them, but overflow them so they can go out into the world and give the gospel to countless millions of people. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. So they they visibly see this uh, ascension of Jesus Christ. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. What an awesome opportunity to be able to worship the Lord. Uh, he's truly God incarnate in the flesh, was with them, and now he's returning to his Father to sit on the right hand of the throne of, uh, of, 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 our, of our Heavenly Father. But they, they watch this phys- physically, visibly, and it tells us in Acts, uh, whenever they see this event, we'll look at that down the road, uh, the same Jesus that is being taken up from you will return in like manner. So not only will uh, they have the privilege of seeing him go up physically, uh, if we're still on the earth at the time of his return, we'll see him coming from the clouds visibly to land on the, the Mount of Olives in the second coming. And so uh, the, the joy of the apostles and the disciples uh, being able to just worship him, and, and not just for a little while, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, really uh, excited, and they continued in the temple uh, every day, praising and blessing God. Amen. So when a church is hot and when it's alive, uh, people can't get enough of worship and get enough of praise and get enough of the word and get enough of being with one another. And that's what I'm praying as we move through this coronavirus, that every one of us are becoming more hungry for the things of God, the word of God, Uh, loving the people of God and wanting to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with as many people as we can until the Lord takes us home. So uh, this is the end of uh, this week with Coffee with Clark, and we'll catch up again the following week on Monday. Have a great weekend.